Hey there, fellow soil enthusiasts! If you found your way to this article, chances are you're staring at a pile of cardboard in your compost bin that's been sitting there longer than a house guest who's overstayed their welcome. Trust me, I've been there. Nothing's more frustrating than watching grass clippings and kitchen scraps transform into black gold while your cardboard stubbornly refuses to budge. As someone who's made every composting mistake in the book and then some, I want to share the hard-won wisdom that turned my cardboard composting disasters into success stories. Whether you're a seasoned composter or just starting your soil-building journey, these troubleshooting solutions will get your cardboard breaking down faster than you thought possible. Before we dive into solutions, let's talk about what's actually happening in your compost pile. Cardboard is essentially layers of cellulose fibers held together with various adhesives and treatments. While it's absolutely compostable, it requires specific conditions to break down efficiently. The most common culprit behind slow cardboard decomposition is the carbon to nitrogen ratio imbalance. Cardboard is incredibly high in carbon, which means it needs plenty of nitrogen rich materials to fuel the decomposition process. Think of it like trying to start a campfire with nothing but logs and no kindling, you need that perfect balance to get things cooking. Another major factor is moisture content. I've seen countless gardeners throw dry cardboard into their compost and wonder why it's still there six months later. Cardboard acts like a sponge but once it dries out completely, it becomes nearly impermeable to the microbial activity that drives decomposition. Here's where most people go wrong. They add cardboard without properly preparing it. Your cardboard should feel like a wrung out sponge before it goes into the compost pile. I like to soak mine in a large container or kiddie pool for at least 24 hours, sometimes longer if it's particularly thick or glossy. But here's the kicker, soaking isn't enough. You need to maintain that moisture throughout the composting process. In my experience, cardboard layers should never be allowed to completely dry out once they're in the pile. If you live in an arid climate like I do, you might need to water your compost more frequently than you think. The sweet spot for compost moisture is around 50 to 60 percent which should feel like a wrung out sponge when you grab a handful. If water drips out, it's too wet. If it feels dry or crumbly, you need to add moisture. I keep a hose nearby during my weekly compost turning sessions specifically for this reason. This is where the magic really happens. For every part cardboard you add, you need roughly three parts nitrogen-rich materials. I'm talking about fresh grass clippings, kitchen vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, or well-aged manure. Don't just layer them, mix them intimately with the cardboard. One technique that's been a game-changer for me is creating what I call cardboard sandwiches. I tear the soaked cardboard into smaller pieces, no bigger than your hand, and literally sandwich them between layers of nitrogen-rich materials. This creates maximum surface contact between the carbon and nitrogen sources, dramatically speeding up decomposition. Coffee shops, restaurants, and even your own kitchen can provide excellent nitrogen sources. I've built relationships with local businesses that save their coffee grounds for me, and honestly the results have been phenomenal. The key is consistency. Don't add a massive amount of cardboard one week and then forget to balance it for the next month. I learned this lesson the hard way after watching whole pizza boxes sit in my compost for over a year. The larger the cardboard pieces, the longer they'll take to break down. Now I never add cardboard larger than a playing card to my compost. Tearing works better than cutting for several reasons. First, it creates more surface area with irregular edges that decomposers can attack from multiple angles. Second, the physical act of tearing breaks some of the fiber bonds, making the cardboard more accessible to microorganisms. Pay special attention to glossy or heavily printed cardboard. While most modern cardboard uses soy-based inks that are compost-safe, heavily treated surfaces can slow decomposition. I like to rough up these surfaces with sandpaper or by scraping with a knife to break through any protective coatings. Here's something many gardeners overlook. Cardboard decomposes much faster in hot compost than cold compost. If your pile isn't heating up above 120 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 49 degrees Celsius, your cardboard is going to sit there looking at you judgmentally for months. 
Hot composting requires a minimum pile size of about one cubic yard proper moisture, adequate nitrogen, and regular turning. If you can't maintain these conditions, consider switching to a slower but more forgiving approach like trench composting, where you bury small amounts of cardboard directly in garden beds with plenty of organic matter. Sometimes you need to call in reinforcements. Compost accelerators containing beneficial microorganisms can dramatically speed up cardboard decomposition. I've had excellent results with both commercial products and homemade solutions like compost tea made from finished compost. Another trick I've discovered is adding a shovel full of healthy garden soil to introduce diverse microorganisms. The soil acts like a starter culture inoculating your compost with the specific bacteria and fungi that excel at breaking down cellulose. For stubborn cardboard, I sometimes create a concentrated decomposition zone by mixing small cardboard pieces with fresh chicken manure and letting it sit in a separate container for a few weeks before adding it to the main pile. This pre-composting step gives the cardboard a head start and ensures it won't slow down your main composting process. If your cardboard has been sitting unchanged for months, don't despair. Remove it from the pile, re-soak it thoroughly, tear it into smaller pieces, and reintroduce it with plenty of fresh nitrogen sources. I call this the cardboard rescue operation, and it works more often than not. Matted or clumped cardboard is usually a sign of improper moisture management or inadequate mixing. Break up these clumps, add dry carbon materials like dried leaves to improve structure, and ensure better air circulation throughout the pile. White or gray fuzzy growth on cardboard isn't usually a problem, it's often beneficial fungi doing their job. However, if you notice a sour smell or slimy texture, your pile might be too wet or lacking oxygen. Add dry materials and turn more frequently to restore proper conditions. Remember composting is as much art as science. Every pile is different, every climate presents unique challenges, and every gardener develops their own rhythm. The key is observation, patience, and willingness to adjust your approach based on what your compost is telling you. Don't let slow cardboard decomposition discourage you from this sustainable practice. With these troubleshooting techniques, you'll transform that stubborn cardboard into rich dark compost that will make your plants sing with joy. Ready to level up your composting game? Subscribe to Soil Sensei for more in-depth composting tutorials, troubleshooting guides, and soil building secrets that will transform your garden. And if this article helped solve your cardboard composting mysteries, share it with a fellow gardener who might be struggling with the same challenges. Together, we're building better soil, one compost pile at a time.